Hi everyone, I am Sanya Kohler, and in this video, I want to show you a few operations with pandas in Python. In particular, how do you sort through data? How do you um, organize it? How do you take subsets? Just a few very quick um, like tips and advice. So if you want to subset data frames and sort them and look at them better and better analyze them, these pockets of data um, that you have, how can you do that better? using um, pandas. So we're going to work with pandas, maybe pun intended, to help us better understand deforestation because pandas need forests. So. We're going to be working with pandas, which is a Python library, but Python is going to be really helpful for our analysis. And pandas really do need um, forests. And deforestation actually is the destruction or clearance of forests. So, um, you know, we get rid of the stand of trees from land, and then that's usually converted to non forest use. You know, forest land can become ranches, farm, urban use. And a lot of this happens in tropical rainforests as well. It's really sad, you know, a lot of this forest is no longer there. So we're just going to kind of be working on a data set related to deforestation. And we're going to be using pandas, uh, not the little cute little guys who live in, um, you know, these forests, not these guys per se, but we're going to use our computational tools like Python's pandas library for data visualization. Going to be using this powerful Python data visualization. You know, it's powerful, flexible, and easy to use open source data analysis and manipulation tool built on top of the Python programming language. So we're going to use that, and I'm going to just show you a few little tips and advice for now. And I hope that this will help kind of, you know, get you started with pandas, um, working with data frames. So pandas is a very popular um, package in Python for working with data. So in this example, I went to this site on Kaggle.com, which has a lot of data um, sets that are available for analysis and sometimes for different competitions that you can use. So I wanted to look at deforestation and forest loss. So what are forest area changes from 1990 to 2015? We can also load this data up in Excel and um, see what it looks like as well. So we have entity code year and net forest conversion. We have all these results. We can sort of see the different years that we have, the net forest conversion values as well, entities and codes. But sometimes, you know, Excel has limits on how many rows of data that you can see or work with. And sometimes you can't really replicate that same analysis that easily. You might, um, if you make a mistake in this Excel file, you might have to redo everything, um, you know, if you have to regenerate an Excel file. So there are a lot of disadvantages for that. But, and sometimes there are only a maximum number of rows that you can load in in Excel at a time. I think it's 1 million maximum number of rows. There is a limit and that's like 1 million and 48,576 rows. So there is a limit. But in pandas, as much you can have way more. I've loaded in data sets with millions and millions of rows. And there are a lot of different tools that you can do and use with pandas. So um, this just shows you, and we're going to focus on analyzing this in pandas um, and just a few initial things to kind of play around with this data a little bit. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing. But this is just showing you kind of what it looks like in Excel. And of course, you can load in um, the data there. And I often do that for data sets. I just play around with them in Excel sometimes and get some intuition. So that's sort of what this data is looking at. So four different time points, 1990, 2000, 2010, and 2015. And it looks at net forest conversion. So the net change in forest area measures forest expansion. And this data comes from ourworldindata.org slash deforestation. So it has a bunch of different values for the countries, like Aruba, Argentina, Australia, you know, all of these different countries here. Um, it has codes for them, the year, net forest conversion as well. 
you can see that this is the value for net forest conversion with a minimum value of you know, negative 7.82 to million to 2.36 million. So this is important because deforestation and forest loss is really key. Um, you know, unfortunately, because of you know, global warming and climate change and a lot of trees are being chopped down, what's happened is that since the last ice age, um, you know, over 10,000 years ago, uh, we had around 6 billion hectares of forest land. And now that has been shrunk to under 4 billion. So that's really sad. So, you know, this is visuals and plots to kind of analyze these changes in um, forest area. So there's a lot that's going on here. So there was over 4.7 million hectares per year loss in um, net forests. So it's pretty sad. Um, so one third of our forests have been lost but we can still save the day if we act on time. So as I was mentioning that 10,000 years ago, 57% of our habitable land was covered by forests, the land that we could live in, the 6 billion hectares. So only 4 billion hectares are left, so one third. So 2 billion hectares out of six have been gone, so one third has been lost. So it's really sad, and they've put up these data sets to try to help us um, better understand the impact of you know forest expansion and net forest conversion but that's just a little bit of an aside on this data and why it matters and how you can explore for these four different time points for uh, many different countries these trends so let's see how we can work with this so what we can do is we can look at this python demo this is the jupyter notebook so it's a notebook to analyze um, you know, some initial trends in deforestation. So I can move this on top and have this as a mic down. Please note. Analyzing the um, deforestation and forest loss data set. So we can have a little smiley here. Or that's me, but you know, this is a very serious issue. So this is a markdown file. So we can import pandas as PD. This is what we really need to work with data frames in Python and NumPy. So this is the file path. This is in my local directory um, where in my documents. So I've saved it in my documents. So this is the file and I can read it and load it in. And when I load it in, it looks like entity, code, year, and net forest conversion. This is kind of how it looked here too. If you look at it here, we can also see that we have the um, entity code year and net forest conversion. So these four columns here that we were looking at. Then what we can see is we have these codes. If I want to make sure that I have four unique years, if I didn't know that how I would find this out is I would say um, year equals DF. I can have it like year list equals DF. This is DF is short for data frame, like rows and columns. And then this would be year. Um, and then if I have it like this, for instance, it looks like this. So I want this to be a list. So there are two ways I can do that. I can either have dot to list. I can do that to make it a list. Or I can just have the list function here. Because I don't want to have um, I basically, I don't want to have um, the row numbers, which, which come by default, 0 to 474. And again, if we see that it has 475 rows and four columns, if I do df.shape, this tells me 475 rows and four columns, and this is a tuple. The type is a tuple. So usually the number of rows that we have would be the first variable which would be this index zero. Which would be 475 rows. Uh, that's what this is. You know, if this is a tuple, then this is index zero. Right here. That 475 is index zero, and then this four is index one right here. So that's what that is. And then what you can see here is that we have this here, and then we can make this into a list to get rid of the row numbers. And if we want to find the unique, so lists 
keeps track of um, all the years, even if they're duplicates. But a set will only display the unique elements. So list has square brackets, but a set will have these curly brackets. So a year list. So this one will have curly brackets. So if we look at the type of year list, it's going to be a set, but we can turn it back to a list by doing this operation, by just putting list on it again. It turns it back to a list. So this will be a list of the unique years in this data set. So we see that these are the unique ones. So now we've changed it. So let's think of it like PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. In a way, it's kind of like that. So you're starting off with DF year. Um, and then what you're doing next is that has row numbers, then you're converting that to a list. So that list is going to have duplicates inside it. Then you're adding set. You just get the unique ones, but it has the curly brackets. And then you also have a list that is just going to make this back into a list. Get rid of the curly brackets and make it a list. So similarly, if I want to find a list of unique, um, oh, before I do that, if I want to just view the first few rows and, and all the columns, this just shows me the first five rows and all the columns of the data frame df. So if I want to get a list of the unique countries, the countries here are entities in the data set. So it's the same idea like how I did it for a year and I've made sure that we have these four years here, which is what um, this was indeed saying that they have just these four years, 1990, 2000, 2010, and 2015. So I can do the same thing here, but instead I can have it like country list, and that would just be equal to, I can start off again by doing DF and then entity. And then again, I have country list. I have all of these here, but I want to get rid of these um, row numbers. So I just do list on this. So that gets rid of those row numbers. So you can see I have Algeria multiple times, Argentina multiple times. So as a list, so I can make it a set. And the set will just have the unique values, no duplicates. A list can have duplicates, but a set does not. So you see now Algeria just one time, Argentina just one time. All of these are unique. All of them are unique. In fact, I can see the length of this, 132. Whereas before we did this, if before I did this, if I just run this again, 24, and then I run this again, now with these duplicates, it's 475 before. But once I make it a set and I calculate the number of items inside it, it shrinks to 132. So then maybe some years we don't have all four, or some countries we don't have all four values for them. So I just also wanna make this back to being a list. I don't want these curly brackets. Um, I just make this a list again after that. So it's a list. And again, the same, it's similarly 132. So what I could do is um, I wanna see, like say for instance, we see the first um, five rows here and we can notice that this is for Argentina is coming here, but this is for Algeria. So what I also wanna do is I just wanna make sure that everything is sorted um, by year, for instance. Um, so I could also just look at this data frame and I could make sure that it's sorted. I can do df equals df dot sort values. And then by equals the column I want to sort them on. Like let's say I want to sort them by year. So this will allow me to sort the values by year. So now what we see is that it's going from 1990 on top and then 2015 below. So it's sorting everything by the year first. Or I could also, or I could say maybe ascending equals false. That means that I want to sort, the, the default is basically ascending is true. So we're going from oldest to newest, but um, the smallest, the newest in 1990 was smaller than 2015. But now ascending is false means that we're kind of going from, we're going in descending order. So this is now going in descending order.
that's what we're going in descending order on here. So this is going from oldest, so most recent to oldest. That's what we're going. So then, but if we don't, the default again is ascending is true. So ascending is true is the default here. And if we got rid of that, then we could also see if we commented it out that it would stay the same. You know, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter that way. We could also do, we could also sort it by entity and by default ascending is true. So it sorts from A to Z. But if we had ascending, so even if we have ascending is true, it doesn't change anything, it's the same. But if we have ascending as false, then it, it changes. And in fact, we can do pandas sort values. The panda docs does tell us that if we can sort values and ascending is true by default. So sort ascending versus descending. We can sort on multiple columns too. We can sort by, maybe we want to sort by entity and then by year. So then what we can do is we can also sort by Z to A um, first, that's what we're doing first, and then we're sorting by the year after that. So, or we can switch it around where you can see what happens if we do it the other way around, where instead we do it by year and then by entity. And you can see how, um, you know, these things change around a bit. Uh, this is Austria and then Algeria, because instead we sort it by year and then by entity next. What is the priority? So similarly, now we have a list of countries like this. We have our list of countries like Cuba, Zambia, all of these countries here. And we can also just sort this, sort it from alphabetically. We can sort a list this way. This sorts it. So that's what this does. And if we, um, do country list here, it's not retained. So we have to just reassign this. We have to do country list equals sorted. So just to make sure that country list equals sorted. And then country list is indeed sorted now from A to Z. That just sorts it alphabetically and you reassign it here. So let's say we want to um, look into data frame for country India, for instance. Let's see if India is in here. India is indeed in here. So this is for India. This is what it looks like for India. And let's say we had done India, like something we misspelled it, then nothing would be found. So this is just for a country name. We can look up the four rows of 2015, 2010, 2000, and 1990. So that's how you can have an exact search for it. Or that's the same thing as you looking up code. If you know the code instead, you can look up I and D. Um, that this is just selecting rows of data for India, and then this one is selecting for you know rows of data for um, for code IND stands for India. We can similarly just look for maybe a year, like if you wanted to look for DF um, DF year equals equals 1990, you can look at all the rows from 1990 here. That's what we can see, just the 1990, 104 rows. And then we can also look at um, 2000. If we want to have a breakdown of all the number of rows for each year, we can just do something called value counts. So what this will tell you is how many rows for each distinct year. That's what value counts is. It's going, it's going in the original data frame. It's equivalent of table and R in a way. So in the original data frame, it's sort of counting how many rows do we have for each year. So we have these four distinct years and 128 rows for 2010, 122 for 2000, 121 for 2015, and 104 for 1990. So that's what that shows. And you can see how we can look up India in this, from this entity, we can look up India and get the, that row. And what if we want to search for a few countries? Um, so 
Another way we could do this operation is we could also do something that looks like this. And I'll explain that. We can also do dot is in, and then we can have a list operation like this. So this is basically helping us from our data frame, but this part is helping us select the rows to use. That's what that is doing. And the same thing is here too. This is another way of doing the same thing where you can notice there are commonalities between them, where this part right here is basically the same as this. And even oh. now you can see that they're kind of similar. Like, you know, India is here, India is here. This is just a list, list is in. This is the different part, is in. So a way to see, this is sort of how you can do this, especially if you're trying to look for, this is always easy if you're looking for one, um, like India, for instance, but what if you want to look for rows for multiple countries, like with India, you know, um, countries of interest would be like um, India, United States, I think that it's United States. They also have world. They have maybe France, Thailand, Aruba. Let's say we want to just view for these countries. So we can't really use this at all. This would not work. In fact, if we try this, so this is countries of interest. This just has one, two, three, four, five, six countries. In fact, if we do this, we can see that this is length of countries of interest would be six. So we have countries of interest zero. We have all the way up to index five because indexing starts um, off by off, off of one. So this would be like, oh gosh, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. That's how the indexing works. Well, identically, this is the same thing as negative six negative five, negative four, negative three, or this is the same, uh, negative two, and then negative one. So if we look at countries of interest five, that should be the same thing as countries of interest, negative one, the second to last, I mean the last one. So we cannot do this if we want to look up these countries of interest, these six countries of interest, we cannot do that. So if we try this, it's going to complain, value error it does not work but we can do an is in approach so what we can do is we can just instead we can look at how we did this approach and we can instead of india we can just put countries um, of interest this list inside here and then what you'll notice is that indeed it works we have the world it's not really a country it's more global but we have the world thailand india aruba us we have this list of of values here that we've gotten just for our, our countries in the world of interest. So um, I think it did not find France in here. So maybe let's use, um, we can look up. So if it didn't find it, it didn't put it there. So it's okay. So instead of this, we can probably put, um, is Brazil in here, I wonder. Oh yeah, I found Brazil. Okay, great. So the idea is that the is in it takes a list. This needs a list as an argument. It needs this to be a list. So when we had India before, we had to put it in as a list because if we did not have this as a list, it would complain. Type error. It needs to be a list. Only list-like objects are allowed to be passed in this. So this needs to be a list. And the idea is that, well, this needs to be a list. And for list operations, because this is the countries of interest, we could do some operations like India in countries of interest. And it would be true because it is inside this list. 
But if I put like India again, if I misspelled it, then this should be false. So this in, and the same thing with like Thailand. If I spell Thailand like this without the H, it would be false. But if I do Thailand, yep. If I do England, England is not in this list, so it's false. So the same idea is this in is kind of like what is the commonality between this and this. Like this is an is in. It's kind of like the in operation for checking if something is in a list. And again, this part here is a Boolean. So I like to think of it like a boo liar, the type of false and who is boo, short for Boolean, like boo liar, whatever you say is false. So boo liar, I like to think of Booleans, like boo, the end is like boo liar, what you say is false. I like guess how I like to think of it. So um, that's just, so again, if you're trying to look up multiple items and subset it, you have to do the dot is in. And that that will help you. So you could also have like Argentina. And then we have like now if we look at the countries of interest, we should have like another one here. So this one would be like six. And then everything is moved over by one. So this will be negative seven. And let me just move this here. Okay, so now if we look at countries of interest, we can have the length, which will be seven, going from indexes like that, zero to six. So again, now if we do this, we still get a looper, but if we do this now, we get Argentina and then Argentina again. And now if we do this, we rerun it. So we're rerunning it. So this is 80th, 81 most recent. So we need to update this. And we can run it. And now we also see we have Argentina as well, and we have all the net force conversions that we need. So again, for one element, it's usually simple. You can do equals equals. Um, similarly for the year, we can also see maybe if I want to check for a couple of years, if I wanted to just see year is in maybe um, 2015, this would have uh, year, oh, I misspelled year. So it, it okay, now it can be now the year is 2015. And if I did this 2015, it would also work too, it works both ways here. But um, now if I wanted to see if it is, oh, I could also have done the same thing like year equals equals and then done 2015 and that would have also worked on 21 rows. Or I could also, because this happens to be either one, it could pass for either, um, but this one needs to be 2015 numeric. But if I was trying to look at uh, maybe 2010 and 2015, there's no way for me to do that like this. I cannot have multiple years like this, 2010 and 2015. It's going to complain value error. That's not allowed. So instead, what I would do is I would just do an is in. And that will allow me to work with this for two years, 2010 and 2015. And that's the same idea. And a few other things that we can do um, in terms of not just subsetting based on, you know, years or um, by um, entities, like, you know, countries, we can also do some subsetting in another way too. You know, we can also do subsetting based on net forest conversion. So even if it's um, multiple words, we can have it, forest conversion. And we can see, for instance, like, you know, um, we have some negative values and some zero and positive values. So we can look at when this is zero. We can see there are 79 rows that are zero for, or, um, you know, the double equals means is equal to. We can see when it's positive as well, you know, greater than zero is positive. We can see when it's less than or equal to zero. That's how you can do less than or equal to zero zero or less than or equal to if we wanted to see greater than or equal to zero that would have been this we could also do the same thing for year for instance you know we could also do you know which year is greater than 1999 even though we don't have that data point it still kind of knows that 2015 and 2000 are the ones and 2010 and we could also just see the 
here that we end up getting this way as well. So what this does is it kind of just goes through here and we can then select specific columns based off of that. Um, so that's what we did here. We select the specific columns and then we can even put this into a list variable and get those values in a list. And we can also do set to get them as a set again. And we can do this again as a list to put this into a list. So yeah, we talked about a few different techniques as well. Um, we're also able to you know, look at the entities, columns. We can just also select a few columns of interest. Like let's say we want a mini a data frame. Um, we want this mini data frame that just has the um, entity in year. We don't, we just maybe want the year and the entity, for instance. And we can have a mini data frame this way. And there could be some duplicates here. Um, in this case, they're not. But if there were duplicates, we could just, you know, do something called drop duplicates and get rid of any redundancies. But there's nothing like that here. So, you know, we can select just if these are the columns that we want. And if we want to maybe add in, um, and we can even change the order around. For now, it's entity, year, and code instead of entity, code, year. So we can do all of that. So again, these are just a few different tips and tricks um, that we can use to work with pandas. And if you tell people that you're working with pandas, they might wonder, you know, hey, are you actually working with these very cute pandas? Like, is that pandemonium? What's the pandemonium? No, we're not working with these quite. We're working with Python's pandas library. So. I'm Sanya Kohler, and I hope that this was a helpful um, introduction to some of the um, tips and tricks of working with pandas. And um, if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. And I hope that you guys have a great day, and please reach out if you have any questions at all. Thank you. And again, let's go green. Let's protect the environment and these panda bears as well. So deforestation is really key because where will these poor pandas be?